Virtually all Goldax sewer locating systems use the same general principles to accomplish their tasks. In a typical application, a transmitter is inserted into the sewer line from some access point, such as a commode or a sewer cleanout. Once the transmitter is positioned in the place of interest, a receiver is used to scan for its location from above ground. The receiver can surmise the exact location, depth, and direction of the sewer line. In order to understand how the receiver is able to do this, it is important to first understand how the transmitter works. In general, a sewer transmitter sends a signal pattern that aligns with its direction. The transmitter's direction is considered to be along the lengthwise axis of the transmitter. When activated in the sewer line, the transmitter creates four points of reference around itself, positioned as shown here. These reference locations are called nulls, or dead spots, for reasons that will become obvious later. Notice that these nulls appear in two pairs, one pair directly in line with the transmitter, and the other pair directly straddling the sides of the transmitter. The nulls straddling the sides of the transmitter are called side nulls. The nulls that are in line with the transmitter are called end nulls. If a line is drawn through the side nulls, line A, and a second line is drawn through the end nulls, line B, then the transmitter itself is located at the intersection of these two lines. Line B always will align with the direction of the transmitter. Since the direction of the transmitter will often match the direction of the sewer line that contains it, Line B will almost always align with the direction of the underground sewer line as well. The transmitter also creates another pair of reference nulls called depth nulls. As their name implies, these nulls allow for depth measurement. We will discuss depth measurement later. First, let's see how to use the receiver to find the four location nulls around the transmitter. To find the side nulls, Place the receiver's antenna in the vertical position. Set the sensitivity of the receiver to low and turn the gain all the way up. Scan the area until a sudden dead spot in the signal occurs. If no dead spot occurs, then lower the gain and try again to find a dead spot. This break in signal is the first side note. Pinpoint and mark this note. To find the other side null, walk a roughly circular path away from the first mark. Continue on the circle until a second dead spot occurs. This is the location of the second side null. Mark this location like you did the first. Note that these marks are directly opposite each other on an imaginary circle around the transmitter. Draw line A through these two marks. To locate the end nulls, place the detection antenna in the horizontal position, forming a T. Hold the antenna parallel to line A and back away several feet. Again, turn the gain up on the receiver. Now, holding the receiver in this orientation, walk parallel to line A until a signal null occurs. Mark this spot. It is the first end null. To find the other end null, repeat this procedure on the other side of line A. You have now located both end nulls. Draw line B through this pair of null marks. The transmitter is located at the center of the cross formed by line A and line B.
Now, let's review how the receiver can be used to measure the depth of an underground transmitter. Although the transmitter in this tutorial is not buried, the proper conditions of a buried transmitter have been simulated for the sake of this demonstration. The depth nulls must be found in order to determine the depth of the transmitter. To find the first depth null, hold the horizontal detection antenna directly above the location mark and aligned with line B. With the sensitivity of the receiver on low, turn the gain of the receiver all the way up. Now, slide the receiver to one side of the location mark and along line B. When a dead spot occurs, pinpoint and mark this location. This is the first depth null. To locate the second depth null, repeat this procedure on the opposite side of the location mark. The exact depth of the transmitter can be calculated from the distance between the depth nulls. Once you have measured this distance, use the depth calculator to relate the surface distance to the transmitter depth. Now let's see how these principles apply in a real job situation. In a real job, the first task is always to insert a transmitter into the sewer line through some access point. First, let's examine how a flusher transmitter is used to gain access to the sewer line through a commode. Assemble the flusher transmitter as follows. Place the small button cell battery into the battery clip facing the button contact of the battery away from the body of the transmitter. With the battery securely positioned, place the transmitter into the nylon bulb and screw on the cap with your fingers. Tighten the seal of the cap with a washer or a coin. Tie a nylon retrieval line securely to the watertight bulb through the eyelet in the end of the bulb. The flusher is now ready to send down the sewer line. Before flushing the transmitter through the commode, it is often helpful to wrap the bulb in toilet paper. The toilet paper helps to carry the transmitter down into the line. Drop the wrapped flusher bulb into the bowl and flush the commode. As the bulb travels into the sewer, gently feed the nylon retrieval line into the bowl. You may have to flush the commode several times to cause the transmitter to travel to the desired location in the sewer line. Later, when the locating job is complete, retrieve the flusher transmitter by pulling on the nylon cord. Avoid pulling the nylon line too hard, lest you break the line and lose the transmitter. Instead, if the transmitter appears to be stuck in the sewer line, flush the commode. This will allow you to float the bulb past the obstacle. Another method of placing a transmitter into the sewer line is by attaching a tape-on to a sewer cable, rod, or hose and inserting it through a clean-out. To assemble the tape-on, place a AAA battery into the battery tube, positive contact first. Put the sealing cap on the end of the tube and screw it down with a washer or a screwdriver. Place the assembled transmitter on the sewer cable a few feet back from the end of the cable. Begin securing it to the cable with electrical tape, wrapping several layers around the transmitter and the cable together.
While taping, give special attention to the ends of the transmitter, tapering the form into the cable. This will help the transmitter to travel more smoothly and securely through the sewer line. Continue taping up the transmitter using a generous amount of tape and making sure to taper both ends toward the cable. Complete the taping job by wrapping several layers of tape over the middle of the transmitter, forming a protective bumper. The tape-on is now ready to send into the sewer line. Feed the transmitter into the cleanout with the cable until the desired location is reached. Now that the transmitter is in the sewer line, we will demonstrate how the principles reviewed earlier can be used to find it. With a detection antenna in the vertical position, the receiver sensitivity on low, and the gain set at maximum, scan the area where the sewer line is likely to be. At the first break in the signal response, pinpoint and mark this location. This is the first side null. Walk a circular pattern to search for the second side null. Mark this location. Note that along the circular path, only two nulls are found. Now, draw line A through the two marks. Next, place the detection antenna in the horizontal position and search for the first end null, holding the antenna parallel to line A. Mark the location of the null and repeat this procedure on the opposite side of line A to find the second end null. Draw line B through the end null marks, thus forming a cross. The intersection of this cross is the surface location of the transmitter. Measure the depth of the transmitter by first finding the depth nulls along line B on both sides of the location mark. Measure the distance between the depth null marks and use the depth calculator to relate the surface distance to the actual transmitter depth. You have now found both the location and the depth of the sewer line. The direction of the sewer line at that point is parallel to line B.